Hello everybody, this is the Circuit Specialist Variable Transformer model TDGC2KM, more commonly known as a Variac. Now this is a piece of equipment that I've actually wanted for a really long time, but as I looked at the reviews on Amazon and eBay and saw some teardowns, I got a little concerned. Most of the ones on the market just didn't seem to be very good quality, so I just didn't buy one. But as I got more and more need for one, I decided to do a little bit more research and I came across a familiar name called Circuit Specialist. Now I've actually worked with Circuit Specialist in the past. They are the makers of my bench power supply. They are the providers of my oscilloscope and they're an awesome company and they've been great to work with. Now, unlike most collaborations where the company reaches out to me, I actually reached out to my friends at Circuit Specialist and asked them if they'd provide one of these for the channel. Now I'll be the first to say that in general, I really like the company, but I'm not gonna cut them any slack. I'm gonna do an honest review and I'm actually gonna just try to stick as much data as I can in here. I've seen reviews on other Variacs. I know where they go wrong. And so we're gonna just go right for the weak spots and see if we can really put this thing to its paces. And I'll give you the data and let you decide. Before I get to my testing, I wanna show you a little bit about what this thing does. I think I'm actually gonna make a separate video about all the different uses for it, but I'm just gonna give you the basics. So it takes 110 volts and it puts out anywhere between uh, 130 volts on the high side, stepping down to just a few volts on the low side, and you can adjust it by turning this dial. And you may think, well, that's not too uncommon, but what's interesting is that their volts AC. Um, there's a ton of adjustable DC power supplies. I have one right over there, ironically provided by circuit specialists, but this one is for AC and that gives you some interesting possibilities. Just real quick, you can use it for motor control and dimming, and I'm gonna use it on some retro consoles and things like that. But there are times that you need AC in an increment other than the 110, 120 volts that comes out of your socket. Now, as I said, I've read a lot and watched a lot of videos about Variax in general, and uh, I've seen a bunch of issues. And so we're gonna actually look at all those. Some of them have issues with grounding. There's issues with build quality on the inside. I've even seen one that was wired up improperly. Uh, there's issues with accuracy where the uh, voltmeter is not displaying the accurate voltage coming out. I've seen issues with um, the voltage not being stable coming out of the plug. And so we're gonna look at all those things and maybe a few more things. We're gonna do some data logging and we're gonna put it through its paces. Now, the first thing we wanna know is, is this device grounded? Um, these devices are mass produced. And so we wanna make sure that there's an actual connection between the ground on the plug and the chassis. And so we're gonna start touching screws. We are grounded there. We are grounded here. We're grounded at the top. Um, you know, and I mean, that basically covers it. Uh, we are grounded in the different places that we need to be grounded. And so we wanna make sure that if there's ever a fault on this thing, that the electricity has a path to ground. And so um, we've done that. We've made sure that this thing is grounded. Now, one of the things I thought would be kind of fun to do is to bust out something I haven't in a while, and it is the Hantec 2D72 handheld oscilloscope meter. Now, um, Circuit Specialist didn't give me this, but they do sell it. And so it's an interesting product because it allows me to put the meter up on my computer screen, which means I can record it, and we're gonna use it later for data logging. But in the short term, we're gonna use it for recording voltage. Now, I've seen enough reviews of these things to not really care very much about what the top says. There's a scale on top, and I'll show that to you. Uh, but for the most part, that's just kind of a guide. Um, what really matters is this voltmeter right here. Now, uh, most of the models that you'll find on Amazon and eBay have analog meters, and they are way off, and the, uh, they're not graduated very evenly, and so it's really difficult to dial in the exact voltage that you want without busting out a multimeter anyway. So the first thing I wanna know is, is the meter on here at least good enough? Now, it may not be as good as a $200 meter over here, but let's see if it's good enough. So we are going to turn this up to about 10 volts. Let's dial it back a little bit here. And you can see that there we're getting 10 volts and there we're getting 10.33. Uh, is the light on? So I do have a light plugged in, so we should be starting to see that fairly soon. Uh, we're gonna go up to, let's go 25 volts. We wanna see if it's accurate the whole way across the scale. So we're gonna go up to 25 volts on the meter and we're reading 25 volts 
on the variaxis. So far at the low end, we're getting really precise measurements and really able to dial in the voltage to what we want. Well, I guess it's time to go to, let's go to 40 volts. And now you can see the light starting to turn on. So we're at, dial it back a little bit. And we're at 40 volts there and 39.3, oh, we're 39 here. So we're, I mean, we're still bang on 40, 40 right there. Um, and you can see the bulbs turning on. And again, one of the uses for this is dimming. So um, you get to see that in action. And we're gonna come up here, let's go to 60 volts. Let's just keep going. Let's go to 75 volts, see how accurate we are there. At 75, we're at 75, you can see it's 75.6, 75.6 there. So let's keep going. And at 100 volts, let's go to. And you can see, yeah, I mean, we're, we're bang on, 100 volts, 100 volts. So what this is telling us is that the whole way across the scale, we're getting accurate voltage here. Uh, let's go up to 120. Yeah, let's get uh, 121. So we're about a volt off there, let's see. Yeah, within a volt or so there. Let's try to get up to 130. Hopefully I don't blow my light bulb. Oh, we can go above 130. All right, so 130. 130, yeah, nears makes no difference. How high does this thing go? Oh gosh. 142. All right, I'm not going to drive that bulb. I, this is the only one of those bulbs that I have. Uh, so anyway, we were able to take it up to 142 volts. And uh, I call that success because this thing stayed right in line with this thing. So it's one thing for it to be accurate, but the question is, can it maintain that accuracy for a long period of time? So what we've done is I've hooked up the watt meter here just so we can see it. Um, and I have the same light bulb here and I've got my meter hooked up, but this time we're in data logging mode, which means that as I clear this button here, we get a fresh set of readings and you can see that we can record the voltage that this thing is putting out over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this thing on and let's see what we're drawing. We are drawing right at 24, 25 watts, which I think is what the bulb is rated at, at 120 volts. And so we're gonna keep an eye on the logs that this thing is putting out to make sure that that voltage stays right where it should. Let's give it about half an hour and see what we got. All right, so I will actually publish the raw data for your consideration, but after 30 minutes running around 25 watts, it uh, went up as high as 120.4 and as low as 119.1, so about a 1.5 degree swing over the course of half an hour. For my purpose, I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Pretty much for any purpose on AC, I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Um, let me know what you think if you disagree. Again, I'll put the real results, the actual CSV export, into the video description. So the next thing I thought I would test, and I'm going to start small, um, is an inrush. Just to kind of get an idea of how much uh, the voltage will fluctuate when you have a big inrush of something like an inductive load like this. So the question is, and I want to make sure I don't blow a breaker in my office, but uh, this thing is say 2.8 amps which isn't huge but i want to get an idea of how um this thing holds up when i turn this thing on if that works i'll hook my toaster oven up to it so uh contact So as you can see there, we were pulling almost exactly 300 watts and it dropped down to um, 116 volts. So the question is, if I compensate for that a little bit, will it stay stable? So let's turn it on. So a little bit over 300 watts, uh, this thing stayed pretty stable. I didn't go back through every piece of data, but it looked like it stayed between 120.3 and 120. 
4.6 volts. So uh, real stable with 300 watts. I think it's time to step it up. Okay, so I can't imagine any way this could ever possibly go wrong, um, but we're gonna go ahead and set this thing for 300 degrees, turn on the timer, and let her rip. And we are pulling 885 watts, and we dropped down to 113 volts uh, from our no load voltage. So we're gonna go ahead and bring it back up to 120, which is one of the nice things about having a Variac. And so now we are pulling almost a thousand watts through the thing and let's see what happens after about two minutes so once it was set the voltage stayed stable the device itself felt cool to the touch uh, as you can see here we have a no load voltage of 133 volts ac um, which makes sense that we're putting out that much to stay stable uh, under a load but you guys can give me your opinion on that in the comments but everything looks good once you actually have it dialed into the voltage you want it seems to stay where you put it all right, now that I have the Variac safely unplugged, I will tear it apart. Um, before I do, though, I want to refer you to a video by Make Me Lab. He tore apart his, and I'm going to kind of uh, compare mine to his, but he tore his apart and found that it was wired up backwards and was causing it to blow fuses. Mine actually did come with a couple of extra fuses in case you overload the thing, but his would just blow a fuse if there was no load on it. Um, and, you know, there's just some poor workmanship on the inside. So I'm going to kind of be going by his and seeing... Uh, what this one looks like just to get an idea if this is a better quality now I would like to point out that as you can see it looks like they moved the screen printing a little bit when they were printing this thing And you can see you've got a double Out of register double image there and it gets clear as you come down here You can also see some just a little bit of paint scuff or something on here um, again, not the end of the world uh, the workmanship not perfect, but it is a beautiful device and it's something that's just going to get used in the shop. So uh, no complaints on my part. Now, originally, the ones that I looked at were a cream color, which kind of would have set them apart from all the other ones on Amazon stuff. But this one is red, uh, so it does kind of blend in with a lot of the cheaper models. I think this one uh, right now is going for $150 on their website with free shipping. Uh, so a little bit more expensive than the cheapest ones that you get on Amazon, but it looks like you get more. You get two outlets, you get the digital gauge, which this alone seems to be, you know, worth it. Again, this, there is a, a gradation on top, a graduation, whatever you call it on top that, uh, tells you the voltage, but it's more of just a guide. Uh, really you want to look at what this thing is putting out, um, with an actual meter. So we're going to get this thing off and just look for flyaways and build quality and all that kind of stuff under here. I do think it's kind of interesting that they put in a 20 amp outlet here. Um, it's probably more quality than they needed to, but, um, this is 20 amp. This is 15 amp. Just looking at it, it doesn't have that little side thingy here. Uh, for those of you who aren't Americans, um, but let's just take a look at the back of it and let me flip you around. So looking back here, everything seems to be pretty good quality. Um, these aren't, this is a pretty good quality outlet here. It's, uh, they don't have the wires wrapped around and they didn't use the, the pressure backstabbing method. These are actually screwed in almost like you'd put in GFCI. This looks like a, a definite step above your typical home grade uh, electrical outlet here in the US. Uh, you've got some wire wrapping here. You've got these connections down here are soldered. Uh, you know, no real flyaways. It's all it's all stuck pretty good there. Uh, let's see. Yep. No wire broken or anything like that there. So everything looks pretty dang good from that perspective. On this side here, as you look at it, you can see we've got a ground screw here. This connection is soldered to the lug. Uh, let's go ahead and get all this stuff off and take a look at it too. So I decided to give you the more traditional top-down approach. And uh, as you can see, I'm kind of zoomed in here, but this is the uh, top of the unit. And you can see that you've got voltage ranges across the top. Now I made sure to take the thing off with the arrow pointing towards zero so that I could get it right in the right spot. And that is actually one way that you can sort of calibrate that top knob. Again, I've said a few times, I don't really care about it, but you can adjust it to kind of offset uh, the little arrow on the top knob with, you know, where it needs to go on here. So I just turned the thing all the way to the off position and took the knob off the top. As you can see here, we've got a, what looks like I'm guessing like a carbon brush that rubs across the top 
of these windings and it looks like it's both adjustable. You can see you've got a spring here kind of forcing that brush down uh, and there's a lot of meat on that thing. So hopefully this thing will last for a long time. And I mean, it actually does look serviceable. Looks like you could actually replace that wiper uh, across the top. And so it looks like there might also be some other adjustments here, or at least set screws to take the thing apart. I'm guessing you could mark it and take it apart. Uh, but overall, yeah, the thing looks really nice on the inside. As you can see, we've got a nice uh, heavy glob of solder on there on that connection. This is wrapped to something. The first winding over here is wrapped uh, for, I guess, a little bit of extra protection. But overall, not a lot to see on the inside of it. And what I'm actually happiest to see is the things that I didn't see, which are loose wires and bad connections and things wired up backwards. If you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll give you some final thoughts. Uh, one of the things, and I told you I'd make you wait till another video, but I won't make you wait for this part. One of the reasons why I want something like this is when you get old electronics like this Commodore, uh, you'll see that a lot of times the power bricks are AC, and this one uses nine volts AC. Now, some of them, like the old Nintendo, you could just put nine volt DC in there, but not on this one. You actually need nine volt AC. And I have all sorts of old things that I work on that I actually need various AC voltages for to test. And a lot of times these old bricks go out of spec. And so um, they'll start putting out a higher voltage than they're supposed to, and they'll damage the machine. So the last thing you wanna do is plug in a power brick for an old device especially when you have something like this that can give you rock solid voltage for the things that you're doing so that's primarily what i want it for i'll probably use it for some other things as well but um so for my application this thing is perfect i i said it before i got i wouldn't say scared but i was disappointed by the other models on the market and the reviews of them and and i believe those reviews were honest and uh but this one i know the people at this company i know they care about what they're doing i know they support the things that they do and so i want to support that so again if you're interested in this you can find it on circuitspecialist.com i'll have an amazon link if you prefer that in the uh, description as well and uh, it's a quality unit and i really do think it's clearly a step above the other ones that you'll find out on the market so hey thanks for watching and have a great day